All right, guys, we got a little bit of uh, good news, bad news, and good news. Bad news is it rained a whole bunch last night. Good news is all the dry dams and all the tile work we've done the last couple of days performed awesome last night. The additional good news is we got some parts in for old Bubba Dumper. Let's go work on it. What do you think, buddy? We're going inside and working the shop today? Yeah, it's nasty out here, ain't it? Well, Mr. Millennial, we've got a whole array of parts. How about progress? You hurry up. Over. Well, I gotta give them a tour of our parts. We, we spent $7,000 on parts. You, I like spending your money. Uh, you said you're gonna agree to pay for half. I said I would quote jobs that need the truck so we can mm -hmm. pay for it. And in true normal fashion, they all come in at once, which is fine. So they've been here for a few days, but like I said, the weather's kind of crap today. So let me kind of show you what we got. We've got all of our uh, spacers and wheel seals i got enough to do three different wheels these things are like 200 dollars a piece that thing's like 175 dollars a piece yeah it adds up pretty fast we got a new to us parking brake assembly saved about a thousand dollars on that uh what else did we get oh we were able to pick up three used calipers i think those calipers are like 50 yeah, dollars a piece leak. <laughs> leak. Just a little bit. so uh I think those are like 1500 new. We picked those up for about $300 a piece. I ended up buying a spare one just in case we need it later. Uh, we got a new to us rotor. We got all the locker parts. I think we've got pretty much all the parts we need to get this thing at least rolling yet. Yeah. And, and I want to make sure I'm going to point something out a little later. This object, we should show the details in the book on that. Oh yeah, we got a book too. <laughs> we should mention that. See? I did manage to pick up a reprint service manual. And these. I'm not 100% sure it's printed in English yet, but we'll figure that out later. It converts it for you. <laughs> I don't know. Anyway, so here's what the plan is for this morning. Uh, Matt, we have the seal kits. That stuff we got from MLH Repairs actually has seal kits for all these calipers. Uh, they are used. I have no idea what kind of shape they're in. So Matt's going to go ahead and tear that down. And uh, I think we just need to go ahead and put a seal kit in it. Probably Better so. safe than sorry, right? Yep. So I'm master rebuilding the caliper. We're gonna try to go ahead and get this wheel seal assembly all back together and uh, go from there. So, all right. First things first. Find motivation. Think it's in the toolbox. All right. Let's do something. All right, pretty simple little setup here. This is our wear spacer. This is where the seal actually runs. This seals up against the housing with this O-ring right here. So we got a new spacer, new O-ring. We got our mating surface cleaned up back there. So this should slide on and go right back there, just like so. See how easy that slides on? Come on now. Don't make a liar out of me. <laughs> Got it. Gotta be kind of careful, make sure that uh, O ring stays in there, but I think we got her. All right, next thing that needs to go in is this rear seal. Got the bearing all cleaned up, so we'll set it back in the race. The seal goes in behind it. That's the back side, that's the front side. I do not have a seal installer that big, so we're gonna try to use the old tappy tappy brass hammer method. All right, got our seal bearing in sleeve. Looks pretty good. I think we're gonna put a little bit of uh, penetrating oil on that just to kind of slick her up a little bit. Looks like our O-ring's still in. 
see if this jewel will slide together. Oh yeah. I think we got a winner. All right, so the next thing I need to go in there is this sun gear with the outer bearing. All these bearings and races look really good. This thing splines onto the actual shaft. The planetary gear comes through and runs on it. So let's see if we're He-Man enough to get this thing in there. So now that that whole assembly is on there, this big axle nut goes in. This is what holds everything up together and tight. And they make a special wrench to tighten that. And I don't have one, so it is jewel right here. Mr. Millennial was making fun of it earlier. Let's see if it works. I told you I only charge $5,000 for it. Look at that. It fits in there like a glove. Now, here's where the question box come in. I don't need the light on me. All right, read the instructions in the book over here. Look, like it wants to torque this thing to about 400 foot pounds, rotate four to five times. Loosen it a half turn, retorque to 221 foot pounds, and then do not back off to put it in there. That seems like a lot of torque for an axle nut, but uh, I'm not going to argue with the book, so that's what we're going to do. Go ahead. I think my uh, homemade socket's going to take the torque. Oh, yeah. There she is. All right. Rotate. Loosen. All right, that torqued out pretty good. Locking washer goes next. We got, uh, let's see here, how do we want to do this? Nope. Oh yeah, there we go, that'll fit. Like a glove. And this piece here goes in the end right here. This is what, uh, Keeps the axle gear from well wearing on into that housing. Just taps in like so. Kind of holds everything up tight. And then ultimately, we have this big snap ring. Holds everything on there. I just brought them. There they are. Bam, got it. All right, next thing to go in is the axle. If you read the book, it says in bold letters, do not remove axle. 
remove axle gear. You can obviously see I did not listen. I'm hoping we can get this line back up without too much trouble. It's got to go in there one way or another. Oh, there we go. That wasn't too bad. Good news, crisis averted, Mr. Millennial. All right. Next time, read the book first. I don't know why. I mean, I guess it is just a snap ring to get that off, but it's not a big deal to get the axle. Oh, well. All right, next thing we need to do is get this planetary gear set on there. We got a dowel pin there, dowel pin there, drain hole there. That all has to line up with what corresponds on that. I think it's kind of heavy, and I'm hoping we don't smash the fingers. Let's try it. We're gonna take and kind of walk in seeing on them dowel pins there. A little at a time. Make sure we ain't lock nothing up. Oh yeah, we're still good. Got it. I think this thing is ready for oil and a brake assembly. I did take a wire wheel and just kind of clean that rotor up a little bit, get a little bit of dirt off there. Since we're going to be putting some brand new brake shoes and stuff on there. How's Mr. Millennial getting along? I'm about to get the first caliper complete. Well, that's convenient because guess what I need? The caliper. Do you find anything interesting in there? Nothing major, just some leaks, you know. Sounds like it was a good thing we went ahead and yeah. rebuilt them. The seals didn't look horrible. No, they didn't. But if I had to guess, I mean, I wouldn't call them good. But if I had to guess, this thing is set out in the rain off the truck because where the seat for the seal is down in here, they were rusted up and pretty nasty. So Matt was able to get in there with that little wire wheel, get that all cleaned up and uh, feel a whole lot better about it now. So. Hopefully he gets that caliper done. We'll get it set down on there. The brake shoes that come out of there are all but trashed. They got a little bit of life left in them. I think the book says you can run them down to an eighth. 
they're a heavy quarter at best and the new ones the new ones are like three quarters of an inch they got quite a bit on them you got one of the new ones over here somewhere uh yeah right here yeah it's a little bit of a difference there bud put them over here side by side so you guys can see so that's a new one that's an old wore out one Apparently they worked at one time because they wore out half a pad. <laughs> Did you have a plan that don't involve smashing your fingers? Still in my past life, I would say it was a dime holding up a dollar, but now I'm gonna say it's a dollar holding up a dime. Can we do this yet? <laughs> <laughs> What's your plan? Do you I'm have a plan? I'm gonna put it down on there and smash the heck out of my fingers. All right, you got one brake shoe in. That's what you said you wanted. A brake pad. And it's on the wrong side, cause, but that you put it there, so that's where we're going to leave right. it. All right, well, I'd help you, but I don't want to get hurt. Oh, that looks like potential thankful. No, it'll be fine. Uh, you're, yeah. <laughs> hey, there's a club in there. <laughs> All right, this needs to slide up. Gotta tip it up, right? Yep. Come yep. like this. There you go, there you go, there you go. Now, the book says we can take this off right here and slide that other pad right on up in there yonder. Well, I'm gonna go over here and get busy on the other one. You take care of that. Oh, all right, perfect. I'm gonna get my bolt started first. Should I put NICs on these? Absolutely. All right. If we can find it. <laughs> Yeah, I'm a good thing Aaron's not here. One of us would be wearing this. Yeah. Caliber's bolted up and plumbed. We're gonna pull this off. Hello. This should allow us to slide this shoe in like so. thought this day would never come, but I think we actually got brakes. It is here. Can you believe it? All right, so Matt's actually just putting air in the back side of that uh, chamber there with shop air, so we don't have to start and run the truck. We got everything bled out. It actually, it's amazing how much better it bleeds when you don't have four random holes in a caliper. It's crazy. <laughs> but as you guys can see here, it turns. Oh, as soon as he puts air on, it stops. And there it goes again. Other side is the same way. I believe with that being done, as of right now, all the surface brakes on this truck are actually working. We may do a little bit of work on the front brakes yet. We pull those apart to do the wheel seals, but we are, we are done with brake work for now. Well, kind of, sort of. What do you want to do next? You want to work on the parking brake or you want to put tires back on? Parking brake. I was afraid you were going to say that. All right, parking brake it is. All right, next thing we need to do is get that, uh, there's a great big rotor, a big disc that goes on right here and it actually bolts on along with the universal for the drive shaft, little adapter plate there. And it's a finger smashing little SOB, but I think we'll get her in there all right. Random parts we don't need. Does that stand for sort of bad? <laughs> yeah. I dropped one nut down there. It could be. Oh, I can't goodness. reach it. I don't know if I can reach it either. <laughs> I don't know if you guys can uh, see me, but I'm kind of wedged up in here. I hope that truck bed don't fall. It's going to be a battle game of whack a mo. Get our safety chain in. Oh, man, I put my camera in the wrong spot. All right, can you kind of carry the weight and I'll line it up? I'm used to carrying a weight around here. <laughs> All right, up a little bit. 
Oh, it's so close. Oh, that one fits. Much better than the other one. Agreed. All right. Now we need the little stubby drive shaft. All right. Get this shit out of my way. Poke him in the chest. You ready? Yep. I'll hold the rotor. Oh, it's so close. Oh, hold on. Need to turn. Hold the rotor. Okay, I got the rotor. This is a man drive shaft right here. Go, baby, go. You're close. Uh, yeah, I'm started on there. I just need a little tabby tabby device. This is gonna spin. So yeah, I think go, that's fine. Okay. Got it. Just need some nuts before it comes off of my toes. Well, we're a little bit of a pain about to get started back here. Why don't you give me a socket Shallow extension? Well extension. Yeah. Okay. Like that's going to be a necessity. Rotors in. Here's my thought, Mr. Millennial. I think we're smarter to put the drive shaft in now before we put the brake on. As we put the brake on it, we'll have to have air on to get a release. But right now we can turn everything freely because the tires are off and the brake's out. Sounds great. Now, when we spline that back together, we got to phase it. You know what that means? Absolutely not. <laughs> <laughs> so, a universal joint is not a CV joint. CV joint is constant velocity, right? Sure. So that universal joint puts a pulse into your drive shaft. This universal joint here has what to be... You pointed at no universal joint. Well, the joint. one that's in the truck. The that's one that's a on, rotor and brake pads. The one that's on that end. You're confusing me, man. <laughs> so this universal joint has to be phased with that one to remove that pulse so you have an equal or uh, consistent turn. So it's got to be clocked at the same time. Why can't it be clocked? Six o'clock, nine o'clock? Because they call it drive shaft phasing, not drive shaft clocking. Well, that's craziness. So basically, why make it so hard? So basically, this cap right here Needs has to be lined up with that cap over there. There ain't no cap over here. There is a cap over there. The cap over there is up here. Are you ready? Uh. What? Yeah. Okay. I'll let you have the heavy part. I'll stay up here and wait for you. I'm ready. Yes, if I'm ready. Hi. I'm trying to help you. So which way is your cap? Uh, you need to turn that way. Uh, my cap is straight up and down. Right there like that, perfect. Okay. <laughs> All right, that drive shaft's all back in, bolted up, looks good. That thing, let me tell you, I don't know if it looks heavy on camera, but in person, it's pretty heavy. We need to get this short little drive shaft in next. This is the one we took out because, uh, well, we lost the drive shaft on the way here, if you guys remember. But I need to articulate the truck to do that. I don't feel safe doing that with it sitting up on these jack stands. So I think we're gonna throw that back tire on, throw this back tire on, and then, uh, 
that hub will still turn. I feel pretty safe articulating it with just that one jack stand underneath there at that point. If it falls off, it's not really going anywhere. That should allow us to get that in there and be in position to get these front wheel seals done when the time comes. So I'm not going to video that wheel over there because it's a real pain in the butt back in no man's land. We'll get some video of this one over here. <laughs> Change of plans. We've got the air jack set up on this side to adjust the height of this. So we're going to go ahead and put this wheel on first. Then we'll switch everything around the air side and do that. You ready? Yeah. Flawless plan, right? Yeah. You remember which wheel goes there? That wasn't too bad at all, actually. Matt was able to take and uh, hold the brake for me just a little bit. I was able to center it up on there and we got her. Look at that. Hit those with the impact, tighten them back down and this one will be on. You have a hard time finding your nuts. Yeah. <laughs> nice. That wasn't too bad at all, was it? There's four. You want to drop her down now? No, let's keep working her on. It's still working up on. It's centering up on that hub. Okay. Oh, it's still going up on there. Now ah, you're getting somewhere. Wow, well, there. There's not one way to get on it. 
Just like that, all three of them back on. That wasn't uh, that wasn't near as bad as I was anticipating it to be. No, you ready for some loud noises? Go for it. All right, that's gonna get that one tightened down. We're gonna fire the truck up, articulate it, and try to get this last little last little drive shaft back in there. Make sure our cabinets back here is closed. We're a little cramped on space. Be every inch we can get. You raise that bed back up now. You don't have to take the crane over top of it. Give us more room to work on that parking brake. All right, turn it towards me. Mr. Millennial, do you have a plan to get that in there without eating our fingers? I do, but I can't say it. People just have to watch Yellowstone to understand the phrase. That's all I can say. Okay. <sighs> yep, that's it right there. <sighs> all right, I wish we had some, uh, can you get that over? A little bit. Move our light. Yeah. Try and get down in here. Can we put it right there in front of you by the bolts. Let me get that over there like that. That's right in our eyes. Sorry. I just kind of chucked it in there. Alright. Alright, we're out. Rotate. 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 Oh, that one there's close. All right. Oh. Turn a little bit. Oh, I can't go that way anymore. Oh, no. This way. Keep going. Out right there, hold it. Hold it. Whoa, 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 whoa.
right there in it. Hold that. Well, guys, unfortunately, we have ran out of time. I think this is what we're going to have to call today. Matt's already had to take off. He had to get to a few kids' ball games, but it is hard to complain. We got a bunch of big ticket items knocked out today. First off, starting with the uh, wheel seal, getting that planetary back together. That actually went pretty smooth. The big thing was, I believe we've got all the brakes working on this truck, at least the surface brakes. Uh, everything seems to be testing out good here in the shop. No leaks. So uh, I guess the real test will be the test drive. I guess that's why they call it a test drive. Anyways, you guys get the point. Got all the tires back on the rear. That went way smoother than I anticipated. It really wasn't that bad at all. As long as once me and Matt kind of got our system, uh, we kind of got them balanced on that hub. Could spin them a little bit, slid them right in. Went uh, very well. Actually, putting the drive line in ended up being much more of a pain in the butt than putting the tires on. I would have thought it was going to be the other way around. It's uh, heavy, awkward and covered in grease. Whoever had this truck before, they weren't shy on grease in the drive line, that is for sure. But drive line's all back in, everything is good. Uh, still got a few big things to knock out, one being the parking brake. I'm thinking that's gonna be pretty straightforward. Putting that rotor in was probably the bigger deal. That, that assembly should just sit right down on there, get it adjusted up. The big, two big things we got left is one, I want to replace both front axle seals. They're leaking like a sieve. They're leaking bad. And whenever we do that, the front brake system's working, but the brake pads are about shot on both sides. So I got uh, brake pads for those. And we got to get that locker assembly back together in the, um, in the drop box so we can get that all working. And I think all the lockers are working on the rear. Everything back there is good. The drop box airline is working off the switch, but somewhere, Wherever it gets air, there's a solenoid valve that locks the front axle from side to side. So we're basically one tire away from being full locked. Uh, I gotta track it down. Yeah, I'm thinking it's probably a loose connection somewhere, but we'll work on that whenever we get a chance. But man, she is coming together. She is coming together nicely. Uh, I need to get this thing out of here in the next week because uh, got some pretty cool stuff that's gonna come in the shop. I got a deadline, I got a deadline. But the weather looks like we're gonna have a couple couple days next week to work on it, so we should should be all right. So anyways, guys, I'm gonna clean up. I'm a dirty, filthy mess. I'm wore out, it's late, and uh, we're gonna do it all over again tomorrow. So if you guys like this video, give her a big old thumbs up. If you wanna make sure you don't miss out on what's up next for old Bubba Dump, I'd consider subscribing. It's free, that way we can catch you guys on the next one. Thanks for watching.